the rest of the story. Maggie Rudkin was a failure. At least she felt like a failure. Husband Henry, with a warm hug, told Maggie not to fret. It simply didn't matter how good or bad a cook she was. It was not even important that she was able to cook at all, but Maggie knew better. Much as she appreciated her husband's attempt to console her, both she and he realized that it was more than a matter of housewifely skill. In fact, the health of her nine-year-old son, Mark, was at stake. You see, Maggie was a career woman at heart. As a young lady, she worked as a bookkeeper in a bank in Flushing, New York. Then she became a teller for four years. Then she was employed at the brokerage firm of McClure, Jones & Company. Henry Rudkin was one of the firm's partners in April of 1923. He and Maggie married. The couple lived in New York City for a few years, but then eventually decided they'd like to settle in the Connecticut countryside. So in 1928, and hear this now, they purchased some property near Fairfield, they built a cozy Tudor-style house on it. They built the house near a huge old flowering tupelo tree. I said they built the house near a huge old flowering tupelo tree. And it was after that tree that the Rudkins named their new home. Maggie and Henry were utterly happy there for several seasons until their youngest son began to suffer asthma. Now the Rudkins family physician happened to be an old country doctor, and he'd seen plenty of asthma in his day, and he told Maggie that if she wanted to restore her little boy's health, she had a choice. She could pack up her family and move to Arizona, or she could put young Mark on a special diet consisting primarily of home-baked bread. Maggie shook her head explained to the doctor that since her own mother had never so much as boiled an egg, she, Maggie, had not really learned to cook. Certainly she had never dreamed of baking bread. Wasn't there some kind of store-bought bread that would be equally effective in controlling her son's condition? But the old doctor was adamant. The bread, he insisted, must be home-baked with fresh stone-ground wheat flour, unsulfured molasses, honey, and fresh butter and whole milk. Well, that was that. Maggie purchased the ingredients and went home and consulted a great, big, old, mostly unexplored cookbook. And at the age of 40, with considerable trepidation, she set out to bake her very first loaf of bread. Well, it came out of the oven hard as a rock and heavy as lead. Maybe it would be all right for a doorstop, but edible? <laughs> Not even to the starving. A hyena could not have digested that petrified monolith. And Maggie was all tears confessing to husband Henry that she had tried her best at bread making, but the result was more stone than stone ground. Henry offered his sincerest comfort, but to no avail. Maggie felt so strongly that she had failed. She could not then have imagined that her subsequent attempts at bread baking would succeed, nor that her bread would taste so good that neighbors would begin asking for more, nor that those requests would become so frequent that Maggie would have to establish her own bakery business. By the way, she named that bakery after her Connecticut country home. The home, remember, was named after that towering, flowering Tupelo tree. But I didn't mention that the New England term for Tupelo is pepperidge. Yes, you know the life work that Maggie Rudkin began at the age of 40 as an effort to aid her ailing son. You know it as Pepperidge Farm. Only now you know the rest of the story.